favorite village boy, Mr. Gano Baby, and I'm back again with another inspiring story. I'm still here in Nairobi. Like I said, it's time to inspire you. It's time to tell you guys that it's possible in Africa. Is it possible in Africa? Absolutely. This is the place where it's, especially for us Africans. But anytime I tell them it's possible in Africa, they think I'm lying to them. I'll tell you a story. Hmm. Um, so, you know, my, my background, you know, we were having a conversation earlier yeah. and I told you that, um, you know, I'm one of those people, you know, I know we're going to be talking about my business today, but yeah. where I started, I was working with a, with a multinational yeah. who um, gave me an, an opportunity to work outside Kenya. And they said, you can either go to South Africa or you can go to, to Ghana. Mm. And, uh, you know, obviously, you know, in those days, South Africa was a place to be. Mm -hmm. But, you know, they gave me more, more information. I said, you know, they think this, this, this Ghana opportunity sounds, uh, so, sounds, sounds more interesting. So I found myself moving to Ghana. And, you know, and, uh, I don't, you know East Africans uh, mm -hmm. tend to be a little bit scared of West Africa. Oh, really? Because there's a, there's a lot of very bad, um, you know, press. Mm -hmm. There's been a bad, bad press from particularly Nigeria back in the day all these coups and uh, you know there was a lot of um, sort of negative imagery being projected but when I got to Ghana oh my goodness you know, I was um, I was blown away um, and I and I lived there and I had um, three fantastic years which show was that uh, I don't know we're going back in history but, uh, <laughs> I know you have to tell me which show was that <laughs> actually this was between uh, 1998 and uh, 2001 Hmm. So Jerry Rawlings was uh, the president then. That time. And and, and there's a lot of you know uh, discussion around uh, change change of regime. Mm -hmm. And I think Kufo came in towards the end of my stay there. Um, and uh, you know it, it, it was it was a wonderful thing to see um, an election that went smoothly, mm -hmm. uncontested. Uh, you know. Uh, the country just moved on smoothly. And that, in fact, one of the things uh, I, I really admire about Ghana is how your, your, you guys conduct your elections very, very smoothly. Uh, people express themselves, they make their choice, and they move on. Move on. Yeah. Whoa. So I just want to know your name and where you're from. Sure. So my name is Ian mm -hmm. Kabiru. I'm from Nairobi, Kenya. Um, I grew up in a sort of modest uh, <laughs> suburb called Kilimani. A lot of people in yeah. uh, Kilimani, those of you who know Nairobi well. Um, and, and I'm here. Although I live in Nairobi, I, I, I do spend a lot of time uh, on the continent. I, uh, I just came back from uh, Accra last week. Yeah. Um, I think that's where I met you. That's where we met. <laughs> exactly. And I know we're going to talk a bit about that. Yeah. I, I, I want to know, yeah, you are the CEO of um, Horizon Offices. That's right. And I just want to know, what were you doing before Horizon Offices? Because you said you were working for a multinational company that was Unilever. Yes, I was working for Unilever. For how long? I worked with Unilever for just over 10 years. Mm. Um, my background was in marketing. Um, very, you know, very, very good start because Unilever was a great company uh, for any young person. You go in, they train you, you learn um, you know, your core skills, they also teach you about uh, business, the exposure is, uh, is fantastic. You were um, tired or you quit? I, I, I resigned. I, you know, while I was there, um, you know, much as I was really enjoying myself and you know, the, um, you know, the, the, the comfort and the security that comes with working for a big company. Mm. You know, every month was coming. Um, you have, uh, you know, really no, no concerns about, you know, security into the future because you're working for a strong company. Yeah. But there was something inside me that was really burning. I knew I wanted, you know, to, to, to be my own uh, man. I wanted to, to run my own business. I had so many ideas. Mm. And, um, you know, when I got back from Ghana, actually it was very interesting while I was in Ghana, um, I had a lot of time to think, and uh, I think it came to me very clearly that um, when I got back to Nairobi, mm. it was time to make the next step and to move out of um, employment and, mm. and, and into self-employment. No one told you that you're getting crazy by leaving such a comfortable job and start your own business or something? 
Of course they were there. So <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't it wasn't a very popular decision. Mm. Um, but you know, at the end of the day, you have to be honest to your, with yourself. Because if you're not doing what you're passionate about, if you're not uh, following your own path, um, you know, you, you, you will never be, be happy. So um, I, won't, I won't lie to you, it was very uncomfortable <laughs> because, uh, yeah, you stop getting that regular income. <laughs> and in fact, when you start your business, the problem then becomes where are you going to find money to pay people? Because <laughs> <laughs> you're employing people. Now you're employing people, and people start depending on you. Um, but no regrets. Can you tell us about what you do right now, about the Horizon offices, what is it all about? Yeah, sure. Um, so, especially now people, I think, know what a serviced office is or co-working. It's, uh, it's a place that is taking, the, is taking over from a conventional office. You know, in the old, old days, you had to go take up a lease, uh, look for money to, to furnish it, to, to fit it out. Um, particularly for a, for a new business. Mm. Very, very big obstacle. But now, you know, you've got people like Horizons where you can literally walk in and within um, a couple of hours and you find yourself uh, working from a fantastic work environment, uh, nicely furnished with all the equipment you need, with, uh, you know, staff to support you. Um, and then we're very flexible. So you can have an office for, um, you know, short term. You know, whether it's a week or, or a year. You mean you provide all the, um, how do you call it, the finish and all that? Everything, absolutely everything. All you need to do is to move in. You just move in, um, you know, tell us what your needs are. If you're working on your own, be, uh, working two people, maybe down the line as you expand, uh, you need more space. You don't have to move again. You you just come and have a conversation with one of one of our, our staff and we will we'll find you within the same location, um, you know, a bigger, more appropriate space. Or if business isn't going well and you say, uh, you know, um, I love it here, but um, I need to, to, to scale down. Uh, you can also scale down without changing your, your office location. Hmm. And how many of these do you have in Nairobi now? So in Nairobi, we, we have five different locations um, spread across Westlands, Riverside, Kilimani, um, and then as, as I mentioned we're also in, uh, in West Africa, we're in Lagos, um, wow. and, and, and of course in, in Ghana, and I, think I know you had an opportunity <laughs> to see, visit I, I saw the Ghana one, yeah. but were you not scared of going to Nigeria to establish your business in Lagos, especially to most um, East Africans that don't want to hear anything about Lagos? and. Yeah, so, I mean, you had the confidence to go and establish such a business in Lagos. Were you not scared? No, I wasn't scared. But remember, I, I was a bit, um, you know, uh, a bit more exposed than most, most East Africans, because I lived in Ghana. And while I was in Ghana, my, my job took me around, around the region. So I used to go around uh, Lagos, um, I'd gone to Cote d'Ivoire. Um, I was quite comfortable. Um, I mean, I'd even drive from Accra to um, Abidjan. Um, I, you know, uh, I didn't have the the ignorance, so to speak. I was I was more exposed, so it, so it was easy for me. So, but I, I think you have a message for. I mean, the ignorant one, if you have a message, since you've been exposed, since um, yeah. you've been there, you know the in and out, you're not being scared of establishing your business in there. If you have a message to your fellow, I mean, yeah. East Africans would yeah, think sure. that way, well, what will it be? Look, you know, we're, we're all Africans, and one of the things that uh, strikes, strikes me all the time is our similarities. Um, and also that all our solutions are in Africa. You know, one of the things that um, I found incredible was when I went to, I remember the first time going to the supermarket mm. in, in Accra and even in Lagos. And I'd find things that we could supply from Nairobi uh, being stocked on the shelves and it didn't make sense to me. Um, I remember finding potatoes from Europe, milk from France, um, fresh produce. You know, we, we, we are huge exporters of fresh produce from, um, from Kenya to the rest of the world. Why aren't we supplying, um, you know, to our brothers and sisters in West Africa, in, in Ghana, Nigeria? 
And a lot of it is because the, you know, the information has not been there. Um, a lot of it is, you know, I think it starts from knowledge or lack of knowledge. I think a lot of it has also been a problem of um, some of the, you know, uh, the, the enablers, like having good um, tax um, arrangements between countries. Uh, transport was a big problem. You know, before it used to take 14 hours from Nairobi to um, to, to Accra mm -hmm. because we had to travel through different you know, different uh, you know, countries. I know a lot of a lot oh. has changed since then, um, but I think a lot of these things have been you know resolved. A lot of these issues have been resolved. I think what remains now mm -hmm. is for people just to take up the opportunity and um, and just go. I mean, there are, there are other Kenyans there, you know, who are doing great things. Um, in West Africa. In West Africa. And the other thing, it's also good to go to a place where you're wanted. You know, when we go to Nigeria, Nigerians love us. People, people may not realize that. You know, they, they, they really embrace us. Ghana, I think, goes without saying. <laughs> yeah. Um, wow. we, we feel very at home. So, for me, those are the things that are important, you know. You said Africa's um, solution is in Africa. It doesn't mean that we don't have to travel out of the um, continent to find greener pastures. We can find everything in here. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, and I was just giving you some, some of those examples. Mm. It's actually, um, I would say it's a lot easier. Oh. I would say it's a lot, uh, it's a lot more sustainable because you can, you, you find yourself in an environment where you can also live. Um, you know, many of us are, are quite happy to um, even, I, I know people who have, you know, settled down, bought property, um, and if you try to convince them to come back to, to Kenya, much as they love home, uh, they, they also find that, you know, they're also at home where, where, where they where are. They are. Yeah. But we know we have majority of Africans living abroad right now. That's why most of them are subscribed to my channel. They want to know mm. what are their fellow brothers and sisters doing on the continent because they can't believe yeah. that the Africa that they left, I mean, people are changing stuff. Do you think that it's time for them to come back and come and take part of the cake of what is going on in Africa right now? I think so. Actually, ask yourself why are the um, Americans, uh, the Europeans, uh, coming to Africa and leaving their homes? Why are they doing that? Because they've, they've spotted something good here, hmm. right? Um, yet, you know, this, this is our home. This, this, is, this is where we belong and this is where we're most comfortable. We are, and this is where we can be most effective, right? Wow. Um, I think in some ways uh, maybe we are our worst enemies because uh, maybe we, we, we have um, the, 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 wrong, the wrong image of our own, um, you know, our own country. Um, I think we need to be um, you know, more, um, sort of more, more, more aware of, uh, well, it starts with, I suppose, a sense of, uh, better sense of identity. Mm. Um, and, and, and confidence that you know, we, we have something better here than, than what we will find out there. Um, Mr. Kabiru, yes. do you know that since I'm sitting down here with you, a lot of people are going to trust you that, let's say there are people from Ghana who want to do business in Kenya, or people from Kenya want to go to Ghana and do business, yeah. you can be our mediator you know, to help us. Is there any way you can help solve this problem about people who want to move from Ghana to I mean, um, Kenya and those who want to move from yeah. Kenya to do businesses? You've taken the words out of my mouth. Oh. That's exactly <laughs> what we're set out to do. Okay. Yeah. You know, initially, you know, the, the majority of our clients uh, tended to come from outside Africa. But increasingly, what we're seeing is exactly what you're saying. You know, when um, uh, a Ghanaian company wants to uh, try its luck in Kenya, mm. this is, this is, a, this is um, a one stop shop. So, you know, you literally, you know, get, get, in, get in touch with us, um, you know, and say, look, you know, we, we are interested in exploring opportunities in Kenya. You, you land in Kenya, um, we leave an arrange to meet you at the airport, um, take a short term, um, you know, a lease with us in, in, in one of our offices. Okay. Um, and then, you know, we give you, we give you access to all our networks. So figuring out how to, 
register your business, um, how to get your bank account sorted out, business contacts, whatever industry it is that you might be, uh, we will uh, you know, point you in the right direction. Mm. Um, and, and that gives you, you know, that very, very important sort of uh, look, look into, mm. the, into, into the market. If you like what you see, mm -hmm. uh, then, then you come back to us again and say, yeah, I'm ready. I'm ready to now take a permanent office and, um, and get started. And, then, and vice versa. Kenyans want to go to Nigeria, Ghana. want to go to Ghana, same thing. And, and I'm not just saying this, um, others have already done it. Mm. Um, your final message to Africa, all Africans watching us right now, your final message. It's just to re-emphasize what you know, I know, I know we've, we've been discussing, so is, yeah. which is, um, you know, uh, I think Africa is for, primarily for Africans. And we have everything that we need. We have all the solutions here. Um, I think we are only scratching the surface. If, if we really, um, you know, put our minds to it, mm. um, you know, we, we can, in, in developing ourselves, we're, we're, we're developing others and, and the continent as a whole. If you had a chance to change something in Africa, what would it be? Barriers. Uh, just to bring down all the barriers, you know, um, make it e easier and cheaper to, to travel. I want to say thank you so much for talking to me. You're welcome. I appreciate your time.